Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride. We're out here today in Osseo at the Foreign Car Show. And we're today we're here with Herb. Herb has got an amazing 1981 uh, 2CV. It's a, I know it as a dishable, um, but uh, for a French car. So Herb, tell us, you know, uh, why did you get this particular car? Well, my first, my first car I ever bought after leaving college in 1958, I went to Paris and bought a, uh, a brand new one, and it was only $1,300, the cheapest brand new car I could find, the reason I bought it. And since it was 1,300 pounds, it was a dollar a pound car. Uh, and that seemed like a bargain. <laughs> bargain. Uh, and I took that throughout uh, Europe and eventually into right, Turkey and then Syria and Jordan, well, you know, two countries I wouldn't go into today. I didn't, don't have the bravery or the foolishness. Um, and then into Israel, and finally I shipped it back to, uh, to New York, uh, where I drove it to my hometown in Chicago. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about, you were talking earlier about how you bought this particular one and you walked into the yes, dealership. At, yeah, at the dealership in, in Paris, in the Champs-Élysées. And um, I asked him, how much is this in, uh, in American dollars? And he gave me the equivalent of 1,300 bucks. So um, I went into the men's room and undid my money belt and brought out the money. And he said, oh, no, no, we cannot take that money. The communists will get it. <laughs> huh? So uh, there's no arguing uh, with, with somebody who talks like that. Uh, so I walked uh, uh, about three blocks to the French bank and uh, traded it in for about 30,000 French francs and, uh, and gave them the cash and drove. It took about six hours to drive a couple miles to my hotel because the way they drive in Paris is very different than in Chicago. Um, in nighttime, they have little yellow lights like... Um, Real, you know, two watt lights, and um, and I could barely see them because I always expected to see headlights. Yep. Uh, but they know how to look for them in, in Paris, and they drive very fast. So I would sometimes get on a traffic circle and not be able to get off uh, because of the way they come on with such gusto. But I love the car, and um, I understand that it was originally made for farmers. Look at this. The farmers would drive this over their their field. And because it had such soft suspension, uh, they, it wouldn't hurt the car to go over the furrows. And uh, they just had to be careful to watch out for rocks and roots. Um, and I kind of like that uh, agricultural uh, beginning. Uh, even though eventually uh, the Russians would put half tracks on, on some of their cars uh, to go through muddy and hilly uh, country. And today, some of those are still being used in Austrian rangers in the mountains uh, because of their ability to track into almost any terrain. Now, tell us about the engine yeah. in this. What are we talking about? How many cylinders? What's the horsepower? Okay, I'm going to go back to my first one, which okay. was like this one, two cylinders air cooled. Oh. But the first one was 12 horsepower. That was really small. My, my lawnmower is six <laughs> and a half horsepower. <laughs> and um, that. Uh, could go uh, almost almost 50 miles an hour. Uh, remember, I went through uh, Austrian mountains at a first gear, eight miles an hour, while Mercedes would pass me by at 35 miles an hour, third gear. And um, this one is, uh, that the first one was only 475 cc's. Um, this one has got the big engine, the biggest engine, which is 600 cc's. That's half of a Harley. Uh, 1200 cc Harley um, and somehow the simplicity of it like these uh, these lights you can adjust while you're moving so that if you're going slow in rocky country you could watch what's immediately in front of you or raise them while you're moving and of course this is the way they had it you could still crank this car the first cars were crankable and the final ones were crankable it was just too much to weld over the hole I suppose, and uh, although I've never had to crank it, of course, because um, this is a big 12-volt system. My first was 6 volts only. So and now the, the, I've had a love affair with this car, wow. and kids love this. Oh, Four-year-olds, sure. five-year-olds wave and smile because they see this as an oversized toy. And, um, and I, I don't mind that at all, that people call this car cute, not swift, not fast, not strong adorable so uh, I don't mind that at all although I do get a little bit negatively excited when I'm on the road at 60 miles an hour and somebody comes up to me with about eight inches 
and they always yell out, this is the first question, always, what year is it? The second question is, what is it? <laughs> They're more concerned with the vintage aspect of its date of birth than uh, the uh, country of origin. And, uh, well, they didn't change a whole lot over the years. No, they I didn't. Mean, they didn't. Um, they, they, I should also say, some people mistake this for some sort of a wayward uh, Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, no. Sad truth is that Volkswagen designed theirs in the early 30s. These were designed in the late 30s, and I did think they may have looked at uh, the German company. Two cylinders, air-cooled, four-door, that you could wear a hat in. I'm talking about a fedora, uh, and, uh, and not get it crumpled. That's the high uh, profile. They also made these as a truck. They they, made, yes, they, they made the them as, came as, up as, with as a, a truck. Dual and, opening doors in the back. Yes, and they always had a distinctive ripple or the swage uh, uh, effect that the more modern ones have. And the uh, this convertible goes halfway back, or it can be rolled all the way back here, which is an interesting and sometimes very useful uh, ability. Now, is there? It actually has a trunk then. It too. does have a trunk. Okay, um, and that just opens up so you see into the back seat area. That yes, area right. back there. Okay. So I but that's that's nice that the I, that the convertible top doesn't intrude on the trunk. Oh no, no. Okay. No, this is. Uh, uh, at one time they had canvas uh, trunk lids, but I'm happy they went to, to metal. Um, my first car had a dipstick. It didn't have a uh, a gauge, a fuel gauge. So I just have to watch my mileage or kilometer edge um, and uh, fill it up every so many kilometers. Uh, happily, uh, I don't have to do that on this one. It's, so where did you find, this is a 1981, right? This, this is kind of interesting one? because I was starting to look for one in Canada and New York and then one appeared in St. Paul. And being in Minneapolis, this would be a convenient. I wouldn't have to go far and if I had to reject it, spend a lot of money going and coming. So her name was Maureen Chevalier and this is hard to believe. Her father's first name was Maurice, but as she quickly put in, he didn't sing. But they had three Citroens and a two-car garage and had to get rid of one and I was the happy recipient of this. Um, remember my first one was brand new at uh, $1,300. This one I bought was about um, eight years old and it was $11,000. I was happy to buy it because it's a wonderful toy. Right. And how many miles? It's is more this than a toy. It, 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 means it takes five years off my age when I get in this thing. It's uh, it's like medicine. Now, do you drive this often? Well, I, I I take it out after the first rain, after the last salting of the streets. Okay. Um, and it uh, goes in as soon as it uh, gets a heavy snow that requires salting again. Because it's being 1,300 pounds, everything is thin. Look how thin the doors are. You know, it's only like an inch and a, and a quarter. Um, yeah, not so a lot of insulation for winter. So there's not much there. Well, they do have a little device that goes over the front grill called a grill muff that's a British term um, and that uh, I'm supposed to use when it's 50 degrees or cooler to help uh, keep the car from freezing up too easily and um, now is this front wheel or rear wheel drive it's, uh, unlike the uh, unlike the Volkswagen this is front wheel yes where it should be it seems to me yeah uh, of course that's where the engine is that's where the weight is uh, and uh, it works out uh, pretty good. Okay. Well, Herb, thank you so much for sharing your story this, with us. We sure appreciate hearing is, it. This what is a, my pleasure.